everybody, it's your old pal Ron Howard from Extreme Sequences, bringing you Monday Minutes. Look, there are so many sequencers out there now, and you have all these models from various vendors and submodel groups, and you, and you just think you have x lights right, and then suddenly you import something and it doesn't look good. It looks like a giant hot mess. And you're thinking to yourself, what do I do? I've created views for extreme sequences and XYZ sequences. But the reality is there are so many different ways that a sequencer can put together sequences, including the way they manage their models. So if you're somebody that buys other people's sequences or even gets the shares, how do you make heads or tails what to do when it comes to render styles? When it comes to layer blendings, when it comes to colors, uh, and, and really the biggest one, I have to tell you, the biggest one is always going to be layer settings for the render styles. I cannot tell you, now with the advancements in how we can create submodels, it's only going to get more complicated for you. It's not going to get easier. With enhancements come consequences, and you're all going to reconcile with these. I'm not going to complain because as a sequencer, I love the idea of creativity with more avenues to express it. But you are a consumer and a light show enthusiast. And at the end of the day, all you're hoping for is a great looking show, but you play it back and it looks like a bunch of gobbledygook. So I'm going to try to help you today with a tool that I think will truly help you when you're mapping or when you're managing your folder structures for submodels. Let's begin. Okay, on my screen you will see I have a sequence playing in the background. Yay, this is happily ever after. There's a ton of effects in it. And uh, if you were to pick up models beyond these, most of these are from Gilbert Engineering. I work with them on the development of these models and we have a whole bunch of new stuff coming out that is absolutely insane. Did I say it? Is that a plug? It is insane. Just wait. And what's kind of cool about this is when you import these models from x -Lights, you download them, you get all the submodel groups and you get them in the order they're supposed to be in except maybe that main group. You got to inch that right above all the other little submodels. I've made videos on this. But what if you have models and submodel group uh, hierarchies from other vendors that have these submodels or these models and these props and, 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 and you're just trying to make sense of this. And a lot of times what will happen is you'll import a sequence and there'll be something wrong with the render style. So I'm going to show you a cool tool here that you can use to fix this. And it's pretty fast. But I do want to warn you, use this with caution, create a new sequence. Just the sequence you're working on, save it with a new name and call it revision two. So you don't mess up the original. You, you're going to need to practice this, okay? Once you start to understand it, you'll be able to whiz through these and make your shows look like they were intended to look. All right. If we look at this little window over here, it's called the select effects. You can get to that by clicking on view, <laughs> windows, and look at all these lovely choices. The one I have chosen that I don't always leave on here is select effects. Select effects is a very powerful tool uh, you really should learn to use. And by selecting it, I have placed it on the window over here to my left. And you'll see right away, my choices are effect type, great. Uh, you'll see some colors here, effects by time, and that's about it. And you'll see start and end times. If we want to choose an effect that we think is being problematic somewhere in our sequence because of either uh, a blending style, a layer setting with render styles, maybe colors, uh, maybe because of the way you wired your props, all the pinwheels that are going right should be going left and... <clears throat> Let's face it, all your other sequences look fine. So are you going to reverse the model next lights to fix one sequence, but then jack up all your others? Probably not. I would treat this on a sequence by sequence basis. That way you don't have to mess with your props. 
Okay, if you're starting over, well then, you know, fix the prop, that's fine. But I'm gonna show you something here that's really pretty remarkable. I'm gonna click on pinwheel. Let's just say that pinwheel is the problem in this sequence. And I know that the pinwheel on the King Diamond is the one that's doing it. So when I watch my show playback, it, the King Diamond just looks wrong. So you can click on that and then it's gonna show you the number of effects and where they're located in the timeline. And you can click on one of these. And then you can go down here and you'll probably find it. This is at 154. That's gonna be down here and that's gonna be on a Dazzler. So we scroll down to the Dazzlers. There we go, there it is. So there it is and you also see it highlights over here on the left hand side. <clears throat> Let's say that that is supposed to be going the opposite direction. Okay, and perhaps maybe both of these are the same. So we can click on both of these effects that represent uh, this, this model or possibly many models. With them selected, we have complete control of what to do with this effect on that model and any others that are in this list that are highlighted in blue by you selecting them. This is very, very cool. We have access to bulk edit. So if I wanted to make these counterclockwise, all I'd have to do in here in my rotation is right click, bulk edit, check, and suddenly they're going the opposite direction. Pretty nifty, huh? What if the render style was wrong? I'll come over here to my render styles. Right click, bulk edit, and maybe, maybe, what if this were a native model like a mother of all wreaths or a grand illusion and you map something from someone else onto these props and they were using overlay center or something else but you need it to be per model per preview okay so i click on that and now they're both per model per preview if i click on one per model per preview look over on the right yep confirm click on the other one per model per preview I'm going to reverse this now. I'm going to right click, render style, bulk edit, back to overlay center. Now they're overlay center. I'm going to reverse my rotation to put it back the way it was. I'm going to right click on the rotation and I'm going to uncheck that. And now they're both going the way they were. Okay. So this is really, really helpful. Where you have to be careful is if I were to select pinwheels in every prop I have in my show and then select every one of those effects, I am now going to be changing whatever parameter on groups and non-groups. Maybe I don't want to change my matrix. Maybe I don't want to change my mega tree. So this is where you want to be careful. I would isolate it to the model only in that group to make those specific changes. Okay. Don't, don't make the mistake of changing everything in one swell, one fell swoop, or you're going to be, you're going to be in trouble potentially. Okay. Uh, can we do this with colors? Absolutely. So let's say I, I want to take all my stars and I have these effects on the stars. And I don't like the red, uh, maybe I don't like the red and the blue. So I can deselect these, click update, and it says update all, yes. And now the colors have just changed. That's pretty cool. Now I'm gonna put the, uh, the, uh, the red and the blue back in the mix and update. And yes, update all. Remember, colors are the one exception to the bulk edit rule. There is no bulk edit in colors. Uh, the update, when you have them selected, basically is a bulk edit. I wish there was a bulk edit just to keep things consistent, but that's not gonna happen right now. This is a very powerful tool. I was working with a, a lovely gentleman recently who had purchased a sequence from somebody else and became very frustrated that the effects were just not looking right and they had their hierarchy and they had my hierarchy and i said look you know th they use th they sequence differently with their effects 
you would need to put those in a group and then you're going to need to apply a render style so it impacts each one of those same models in a group so they all do the same thing. Once they understood how this works and put it into play, it fixed everything and it fixed everything very fast. So I don't want you out there having to spend an exorbitant amount of time doing things the hard way. This is why I make these Monday minutes to share knowledge and impart it. And if this is helping you, I'm going to ask you again, hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, it helps the algorithms with the channel. I'm trying to get this content out to as many people as possible to help them. Uh, the more pressure we can take off of asking questions in various groups and forums all over uh, with some basic fundamental understanding, uh, the more time we'll have to work on our shows. That, I mean, that's my hope. Let me know in the uh, comments what you think about these Monday Minutes. Let me know your thoughts and what you would like to see Monday Minutes content on. All right. That's all I've got for you. I'm Ron. This has been Monday Minutes. You guys have a great week. See ya. <laughs>